In this video, we're going to create an SQL database in Microsoft Fabric. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of IDoData.com. Over the last few years, one of the principal software as a service, SaaS, SQL databases has been on Microsoft Azure. However, recently, Microsoft have decided to copy the functionality of the SQL database from Azure into Fabric. Now, it's still going to remain on Azure as well, but Microsoft seems to be trying to place Microsoft Fabric as the go-to destination for Software as a Service Data Analysis Cloud with Power BI service, lake houses, warehouses, real-time data, and more. So here I am on a page all about Microsoft Fabric, and you can ask your questions here. For instance, what is SQL database? And here you get an answer about it. So you can see it is a developer-friendly transactional database based on Azure SQL database. Now, your first question might be, how much does it cost? Well, you'll notice that there is a free 60-day trial. So you can try that without any cost. But if I go up to pricing, notice we go outside of Microsoft Fabric into Microsoft Azure. The management of your Fabric capability is still done in Azure. Now, if I scroll down, you can see that we've got various capabilities. So these are SKUs, the different types of units you can use, measured in capacity units. So really, the only thing you need to know is that when it goes up, you get more capacity, get more compute, get more of other things. Also, you get more of the price. So the price is around $260 per month for the minimum F2, going all the way up to $269,000 per month for an F2048. Now, the trial you would be getting if you go for the 60-day free trial is at the M64 level. So you would be having effectively around $17,000 worth of capacity in this free trial. Now, if you wanted to pay ahead for a year, then you could get about 41% savings. And if for some reason you find you don't want to continue it for the entire year, then you can get a refund as a credit to your Azure account. Now, there may be additional costs for one lake storage. So you can see 2.3 cents per gigabyte per month. This doesn't include storage costs for mirroring a database. So you can see on the cheapest SKU, you can get two terabytes of mirroring storage for free for replicas. And coming probably in this year, there may be costs for networking. So let's now log into Fabric. Now we can't do that on this page because we're still in Microsoft Azure. But if I go back to Microsoft Fabric, I can click on try it for free or start free trial. So I'll click on try for free. Now I already have a trial license, but let's see what happens if I don't. Then you'll go to this page where you will need to sign in. So I'm going to sign in using another email address that I haven't used for Microsoft Fabric. So I'll click submit. And here you can see you've selected Microsoft Fabric free. Now, for most of Fabric, you do have to pay to use it. There are some things that you can use Microsoft Fabric for free. It largely revolves around Power BI items and being able to view some Microsoft Fabric items, not necessarily use them. So you can see it then asks you, what kind of email address is this email address? Well, I'll say I got it from my organization or it's my personal email address. Then click next, enter your details, and then your account should be confirmed. So we can click on the get started button. So I'm going to just say ask later for this action required. It wants you to download the Microsoft Authenticator app on your mobile phone to assist with security when logging in. But I'll click ask me later, and do I want to stay signed in? I'll say yes. So however you get here, this is the Fabric homepage. And I'm going to go into my workspace, 
Now, you might want to create a new workspace. A workspace is a place where you can store things like databases. And I'm going to go to New Item and I'm going to type in Database. So there is SQL Database. Now, you can see that I need to upgrade to a free Microsoft Fabric trial for this workspace. So I will click Upgrade and it is now assigning the workspace to this trial capacity. So I'll click OK. So I'm going to refresh as the computer has forgotten what I wanted and go into new item again, database, SQL database. What is the name of my SQL database? So I'm going to call it Fabric SQL database and click create. Now, if I was creating an Azure SQL database, there would be a lot of additional questions regarding configuration, networking, and that sort of thing. However, you can see that that literally was the only question that I have been asked. So the computer is now creating this SQL database. And here it is. It only took around 30 to 40 seconds to do. So the computer is still loading other things. So you can see there's an error. So I will refresh this page. So now we are in our Fabric SQL database. So this is a lot quicker than creating an Azure SQL database. A lot fewer questions needed. So I'm going to go to New Query. So I'll now type Create Table, Table First, ID, Int, and Description, Varchar 20. Very simple table. And here you can see the computer has now created that. So there are my columns. And I'm going to insert into table first values one first description and then two second description. So let's run that. So two rows affected. And now let's query table first. And there we can see the results of my query. Now let's go back to my workspace and to my Fabric SQL database. So you can see a semantic model has been created. We could use this in Power BI. So if you wanted to create a Power BI report that queries from the Fabric SQL database, well, your semantic model is already set up, or at least the beginning of it is. And if I click on the dot dot dot, next to the database, you'll notice that I can share, I can grant people access to my database. Now, if I grant them access to the database, they won't have actually any access to the data. So I can either go check read old data using SQL database or using SQL analytics endpoint, which is also created, or using Apache Spark, and allow people to build reports on the default database. Now, I could not select any of those and give a user who also uses this fabric tenant, this organization, access to it. Click grant. And then if I go back into fabric SQL database, I can say grant select on table first to and in hard brackets, Jane. And type in the rest of my email address or Jane's email address. So I could then run this and then Jane would have permission to select from this table. Now let's go back to my workspace and we go to the dot 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 next to the SQL database and go to settings. And if I go down to the connection strings, we can see here how to connect. So now let's use this connection string to connect to my database using SSMS. So I'm not going to copy data source, but I'm going to copy after the equal sign until and including the 1433 figure. So right and click and copy, and then open up SSMS Management Studio, and I will connect to a database engine. So I will paste that in, and in the authentication, I'm going to choose Microsoft Entra MFA, multi-factor authentication. In the connection to properties, 
I'm going to go back to Microsoft Fabric and I'm going to copy not initial catalog equals, but everything after that until the semicolon. So I will copy that and paste that into connect to database. So let's click connect. So now I have to sign into my account. So I will do that. And then I'll close this window. And here I am connected to my Fabric SQL database. So if I click on new query and then make sure I've got the right database shown, which I have, I can say select star from table first. And now you can see the data. Now, another way of getting these connection details is if I go into my Fabric SQL database and I click on Open with SQL Server Management Studio. And this will give me the server name and the database name, which I can copy to the clipboard. So the next question that might occur to you is, what should I use, Azure SQL Database or Fabric SQL Database? And for me, the answer is, well, what are you going to use that database in connection with? Is it going to be things in Azure or is it going to be things in Fabric? Also bear in mind the price. To use the Fabric SQL database, you would need to have a Fabric capacity, which starts at around $262 per month. So that is probably only viable if you are doing things in Fabric as well, like lake houses, data warehouses, real-time intelligence, and that sort of thing. In Azure, at the time of recording, you can try Azure SQL Database at no cost. So you can create up to 10 general purpose databases with a huge monthly allowance. And that might be more than sufficient for your needs. However, Microsoft is trying to place Microsoft Fabric as being the go-to SaaS cloud for data analysis. As we've seen, the setup was remarkably simple. So it is possible that Fabric is going to be the future, though Microsoft have not said that they're going to wind down Azure at any time soon, and I don't think they will either. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to know more about the other services that are available in Fabric, then why not come to our website, idodata.com, where we have got two courses on Fabric, the DP600, Fabric Analytics Engineer Associate, and the DP700, Fabric Data Engineer Associate. If you don't want to learn about Power BI, then I would go for the DP700. This is a standalone course, and you will learn how to use PySpark, SQL, and KQL in conjunctions with data pipelines, data flows, notebooks with data lakes, data warehouses, event houses, and more. For more details, please go to our website, idodata.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not click like? And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Do you have any ideas for additional videos you want to see? Why not let me know in the comments? And let me know if you're going to be using either Fabric SQL Database or Azure SQL Database. Now, if you'd like to know how to set up Azure SQL Database, then please click on the video on the end screen. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.